58 points fell a long time ago, so I've been working on some jokes. What do you call an uninteresting pig? A boar grunter. What did Slanesh say to corn? Nice axe. Did you hear the new orc joke? It's a real bone splitter. I'm here all week. We've been sent an advanced copy of Warcry, so we want to thank Games Workshop and everyone who watches our channel for supporting us. We've assembled and painted the Iron Golem, the Untamed Beasts, and all the terrain, so now we're ready to try our first game and begin to fight for control of the Bloodwind Spoil. Here we go. Starting our first game of Warcry, you have to set up the board. And the board that comes with the set here, it's really cool. It's double-sided, just folds out. And there we go, we have a 22 inch by 30 playing surface. Now we need to do the priority roll. So I've got this red dice here, a three, oh, so versus a one. So now I have the priority. So after the priority roll, we have to split up our army into battle groups, the dagger, the shield, and the hammer. There's some restrictions here. Each battle group must have at least one fighter and cannot have more than half the total fighters in the warband. And in addition, at least a third of the fighters in the warband rounding up must be in the shield. It's Jack. And since I lost the priority roll, I have to split my army into the three battle groups first, being the hammer, the shield, and the dagger. First, we'll go with the dagger. I have two iron legionary and one iron legionary with twin hammers. Then we'll go with the shield. I have an Ogre Breacher, the Signifer, and the Armator. Now we'll go with the Hammer, and I have the Dominar and the Drillmaster. And that is 975 points of Iron Golems. Hey everyone, this is Brent, and I'm playing the Untamed Beasts. So this is a thousand point warband, and I have split them up into starting with the Dagger. That is going to be the Rock Tusk Prowler and the Beast Speaker. The shield is going to be the leader, the Heart Eater, and the two Prey Takers. One has a Sawtooth Blade and the other has a Fanged Axe. And then the Hammer is going to be here the First Fang and three Plains Runners. The next step is going to be the battle plan. Now, there's four decks of cards in Warcry that you create your games with. We've got a terrain deck, deployment deck, victory deck, and twist deck. And the player that won the priority roll is going to draw one card from each deck. Now, these are definitely like the old open war cards, but there's so many of them, you're never going to be able to play every possible game of Warcry. So now I get to... Basically, I get to be the dealer now. I'm going to uh, draw here. So this is from the terrain deck. So that's going to be how we're going to set up the battlefield. Uh, deployment, that's how we're going to set up our warband. Victory condition. It's the victory deck, so uh, we're going to read that in just a moment. And then also a twist, dark omens. So now that we've taken a moment to look over these cards properly, starting with the terrain deck, Jack has grabbed all of the terrain pieces that we're going to be using this game, so you, you just kind of have to look at the card, look at the terrain pieces that it comes with, and you're going to set the board up uh, in the same way. Uh, for the deployment deck, so this is Ambush, since I won the priority roll, I get to pick which color each player is going to be. Uh, and then these are the deployment points which they're going to set their battle groups at. So I'm going to make Jack the blue player, so he's definitely the one getting ambushed. Here's going to be his shield, his dagger, and his hammer off the board. My dagger is going to be off the board, and my shield and hammer will start right there. So we move to the victory card, Dominate. A player wins the battle as soon as every fighter in their opponent's shield is taken down. And uh, as a bonus there, at the end of the fourth battle round and each subsequent battle round, any shield fighters within four inches of the battlefield edge immediately count as being taken down. Well, I don't think we're going to get that far. We're going to definitely have taken out each other's shields by then. Yeah, look at that. He's, he's bloodthirsty. I'm learning how to play. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for this twist, I found this pretty interesting. So it said shuffle and draw one twist card with the climate rune mark and one twist card with the psychology rune mark. 
both twist cards are in effect this battle. I wasn't aware that the individual twist cards had rune marks, so here's the psychology card. Grudge match, add one to the strength characteristic of attack actions made by fighters this battle that have a range characteristic of three or less. So we definitely hate each other. And uh, what better time to fight your mortal enemy than uh, right before sunset, you know, at dusk. So no ability or attack action can be used to target an enemy fighter more than 12 inches away in the first battle round, nine away in the second battle round, six away in the third battle round, three away in any subsequent battle rounds. That is the climate twist. So now we're going to go ahead and start with setting up the board like so. Well, we think we got this. Uh, <laughs> what do you What do you think? We're gonna go ahead and do the deployment next. So now it's time for the deployment. Now I did do this a little bit out of order. Now I need to select uh, that Jack is going to be the blue team and I'm going to be the red team. Since I set up uh, or I, I won the priority roll, I need to set up my dagger first. And my dagger was my rock tusk prowler and my. Uh, beast speaker and they actually set up off the board so they're gonna go ahead right there now Jack needs to set up his dagger which is right here and oh, also what? note that uh, the top of the board is uh, determined by these arrows so the same as on the deployment card that is gonna be the top of the board so Jack where are you gonna set up your dagger so my dagger consists of all three of my iron legionaries um, mm -hmm. so I'm going to Oh, yeah. Because the the eight inch, uh, it's always eight inches over one, mm -hmm. yeah, six inches up, which is right on this skull. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Sigmar head, and I have to uh, be wholly within three, and we measured it, and I'm just wholly within three here. So they are hanging out, waiting to dag people, and they're really proud of knocking over the statue of Sigmar. Yep. So now I need to set up my shield, so it's going to be in this corner. Uh, again, six. Uh, inches this way, eight inches this way, and there's my leader, the heart eater, and we'll set up the two prey takers as well. They are lying in ambush, but remember, if all three of these models are taken out, my shield, I'm gonna lose the game. Setting up my shield, I got the armor door, my ogre breacher, which I actually... Yeah, he's there. so small, I gotta get down here and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my signifer. And now setting up the hammer, it's just this point right on the edge in the center of the board. So that's going to be the first fang, and then his posse of planes runners here. I'm going to set up all three of them. That's good because they can uh, hopefully support my shield over here. So for my third and final hammer, uh, I am setting up my dominar and my drill master. He's yeah, got a hammer. Did you plan it that way? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I think they all have hammers. You only had one choice, yeah. So we've got those two battle groups uh, over in reserves. And this rule right here, reserve battle groups, they have special designations, RND2 and RND3. So that's what round they're going to arrive. And you look at the deployment card there. So these are both RND2. So we're going to have to play planning on having reinforcements in turn two rather than turn three. So in this next step for the victory card, this is where you would determine who's going to be the attacker or the defender if the scenario is, uh, or, or the victory card is, is uh, saying that you have to follow those rules or if you have to set up any objectives. Fortunately, we got one that just says uh, kill all the dudes in the shield, so we get to skip that step. And we're also going to note that tied games, uh, the, if, if the game is a tie, nobody has, you know, this, this can go on until somebody has uh, destroyed the other player's shield. The game will just keep going until somebody achieves victory. And uh, after that, we are ready to begin the game. So now the game begins, and it is divided into 
battle rounds. There's three sequences in each battle round, the hero phase, reserve phase, and combat phase. In the hero phase, we're going to be rolling a uh, six dice called initiative dice. This is what's going to determine who's going to be taking an action first, and also we're going to be gaining ability dice, which is what we're going to use to activate special abilities for our fighters. There's a reserve phase, which is not going to come into effect until turn two, where we're going to get the fighters that we have outside the board and then the combat phase is where you move where you fight where you carry out abilities everything else is going to happen in the combat phase and uh, this is going to make up a, a whole battle round and of course we're going to go until one of our shields fall so we're going to go ahead and make our initiative roll now and then we'll kind of explain what these dice do specifically okay so we're going to look first for dice that don't have any matching dice these are called singles so in this case i don't have any because I have a pair of twos, a pair of fours, and a pair of fives. Jack, what do you have? I have uh, two singles. Oh, I'm missing a die. <laughs> uh, I have two singles mm -hmm. and two doubles. Two doubles, right. So if you have uh, two of the same dice, that's going to be referred to as a double. Threes are going to be triples, and four is going to make a quad. So in this case, we are looking at which player has more singles? Well, I have none here, and Jack has two. So right now, Jack has the initiative. These are uh, now called our ability dice, where on our, like right here, these are the different abilities that my warband has. You can see it says double, triple, quad. It's going to take these dice to activate those abilities. So uh, after we've made this roll, Jack has the initiative, we each get a wild dice, which we can either turn into a single or we can add to one of our doubles or triples. So Jack, since you have the initiative, you get to pick first. So you're going to go ahead, make that four. A quad, uh, triple, a triple, triple. Yeah, so you've got triple four. Uh, and this is pretty smart of Jack, too, because if uh, I have to now go ahead and just make this into a triple, since there's no way I could get more singles than Jack can. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a triple five. From there, we would check again who has the most singles, which is still Jack. Uh, if the result was tied or I had more singles, then the initiative could change. And the result of a tie, would, we would just dice off. But in this case, you keep the initiative. You've got two doubles and a triple. I have two doubles and a triple. And now we're going to move into the combat phase. So here we go. Jack has the initiative. So he gets to pick which player activates a fighter first in the combat phase. So Jack, who's it going to be? I'm going to go first, and I'm going to pick my Iron Legionary right now, who I haven't named yet, <laughs> but oh, we're going to yeah, do that yeah. when we go into the campaign. Uh, so they go four inches, so you're going to go here. Yeah, so in this case, uh, you get two actions in your activation. There, there's some generic, or the four, sorry, the four actions are going to be move, attack, wait, and disengage. So in this case, Jack... Uh, chose to move, so he gets to use the movement characteristic on his card mm -hmm, and make that as an action. But you get two actions in your activation. So, Jack, what are you going to do for your what second move action? Move again. Great. So he doubled that up, so he moved four, and then he moved four again. That is going to be his turn. Now I get to activate one of my fighters. Brent, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Yeah, for my activation, I'm going to take this planes runner right here, and for my double two, I'm going to use Rush, which is a universal ability, adds one to the move characteristic of this fighter until the end of their activation. So his move is going to go from five to six. I'm gonna move five inches here. Now we were looking at the rules for climbing terrain and using stairs. Normally to climb up a wall, you have to start your activation or your action touching the, uh, the terrain feature, in this case considered an obstacle. But if you're next to stairs, you can actually just move onto them. There's some risk that if somebody attacks you while you're on stairs, you might fall off, which is probably my favorite rule that I've read so far. But right now, he can just... Well, okay, we know he's there. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to move again for my second action. So he's going to go three inches to the top of the stairs here, and then three more inches he's going to wind up right here, looking out at the battlefield. Gonna select this Iron Legionary as well and not knock over fences. He goes four, which he's gonna go right over to here. And then another four. I'm just trying to. You just don't want my. <laughs> ambush. Who's yeah. being ambushed? I'm That's... gonna ambush the ambush. <laughs> Smart. So here we go. I'm going to take the Prey Taker with the. 
the Fanged Axe. He's also going to use a double to use Rush, get plus one move. So how climbing works in this game, since he is touching this obstacle, you know, this piece of train feature uh, is called, or considered an obstacle, they have a chart in the book that will show you which one is which, he can now move vertically, and now that his move has been up to five, so he can go three, uh, yeah, whoops, three inches up, and then he has two more inches to land on the platform. So this is important because uh, if he finishes climbing and he's not either on the floor of the battlefield or on a platform, then he's going to fall down and possibly take damage if it was high enough, or at least he would fall back down to the floor. So that was one move action. Now he's got another five inches since I'm going to uh, move again. He's going to just go right here. Going with my uh, Iron Legionary with the twin hammers, I'm going to move my four inches here, and then another four inches here. If you, uh, my game plan is I want to intercept these ambushers, kill them off, and then I'll outnumber. I'll have a shield, a dagger, and a um, what's the last one? Uh, a hammer. 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 Oh. All three versus his <laughs> hammer and shield. I want to get rid of his dagger. We're like three turns in. Jack's already thinking yeah. tactically. Next movement for Brent. Yeah, so I'm going to activate the Heart Eater. He's going to make a move action and just stop right here because he has to be touching the obstacle to start climbing it. So with his second move action, then he will take his movement of five. He will hop up three and then move uh, another two inches right here. So now he's on the platform. He's safe and sound. Next, going with uh, Signifer. He is going to move his four. And then I'll activate him again and he'll move his four, which is right there. The welcoming party. Bone saw is ready. Oh, I'm gonna move to the uh, <laughs> right taker with the uh, sawtooth blade. Uh, so he's gonna go ahead and move his four inches, so he can touch here. And then as a second action, he's gonna move his three inches and another inch up here to land safely on the platform. So I am gonna use my double to rush with my. Ogre Breacher, which gives him a movement of five. And then, so he will run in front of this door. And now I'm gonna start my second action. <laughs> this is the hardest thing he's ever done. And he's gonna open it with, I don't know how he's yeah. gonna open it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I broke it down for sure. turn the knob and then he's just gonna- He's late to work. Right out here. Yeah. So how that works is uh, if you've got a door, um, you know, normally you're not allowed to move through terrain, but even if you're a bigger model, and you are next to a door or an archway, you can move through it. The door has to be, you have to be touching it at the start of your action, so you're, you're opening the door. There's some other restrictions too, like the, uh, the rock tusk prowler over there can't open the door, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, seen Jurassic Park? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so the second uh, move action, then he just moved right through the door, even though, you know, you can't move through other train. So we're still learning the strategy here. I had uh, assigned, you know, this, uh, this this triple, and I don't have any abilities that are a triple that I could use right now. So I probably should have just saved my wild dice. You can save them for different uh, for subsequent turns. That's uh, my mistake. But at least, as Jack pointed out, you can take a triple and use it as a double. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this as a rush. So when I activate my uh, pr first Fang here, he's going to have now a movement of five, and I'm going to move him one more time. He's going to move five over here. I pointed that out off camera, but it was a very clever question I had. <laughs> going with my Armador, I'm going to use my triple and make it a double and have him rush. So he's movement seven now, right? Uh, he is movement eight, so he started <laughs> at movement three, and so he's going to move up to here, Four. Oh. and I'm going to start Oops, it, just go up in. three, and then go by <laughs> one, and that is a very agile dwarf right there, a dwarden. Look an expert climber with two hammers. Yeah, <laughs> it's like ice picks. Got another planes runner I'm activating here, move action of five. It's going to scoot me under the bridge here, and then another move action of five. I'm going to go ahead and take some cover right here. I moved all my models, uh, and so I'll have to pass. Now Brent has his last character to move. Just one more planes runner who is just going to keep up with the pack because they're the untamed beast, right? And go right there. 
that is going to be the end of round one. As you can see, I am waiting along here for the ambush to come. And I do have those characters coming in round two. And this is, uh, looks like Brent's just moving all his stuff over. And now we get to roll off to see who gets to activate verse in round two. So we're going to be playing a couple games in a row here. Kind of a, a light campaign. We're going to name our guys kind of as we go. And we're just so impressed that this ogre breacher fulfilled his destiny by breaching a door and uh, opening it. Jack, why don't you go ahead and roll a name for this guy? So first his uh, first name. Ten. A ten. Uh, that's going to be... Bruge, uh, and it's up to you. Does uh, does an ogre have a last name or uh, no? No, no, no. Don't have last no name. He doesn't have a last uh, name. He does have a last name, but it's not on here. It's but it's not Bruge. Bruge. Sledgefist. Bruge. Sledgefist. Sledge Absolutely. Um, and uh, this is for your warband. Uh, why don't you why don't you give him a background too? That's a that's a d six, I guess. Yeah. I'll roll that three. Oh, he is dragon marked. The warrior has was burned by the fires of Axe <laughs> Axronathos and wears these marks proudly. So underneath all that armor is a scarred, yeah, scarred uh, terrifying ogre. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's see if he's... Bruged Sledgefist. <laughs> Bruged Sledgefist. Now, Brent, this character, not Bonesaw, but the uh, the guy with the bone axe, he climbed, uh, and that's how we learned the rule that you can yeah, climb <laughs> and move at the same time. Yeah. So, what is his name? Ulrich be? Rules Teacher. Uh, wait, no. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a, a first name. Five. That's uh, Makot. Um, and I actually kind of like that. So, <laughs> yeah, he's he's Makot. Let's give him a last name, though. Let's let's try that out as well. Uh, Makot Vornslayer. I like it. Yeah, I don't know what a, a Vorn is. What's his, <laughs> what's his background? Yeah, for gonna sure. That too. That's going to be a three. He's child of the Devourer. This warrior was born with the mark of the Devourer, a sign of holy favor. So Makot Vornslayer, uh, he's looking for his next meal. Rolling initiative for round two. Ooh, well, let's see. So this is a, a six with these special. Oh, I got uh, double sixes. And four singles. One, two, three, and five. All right, I have two doubles and two singles. Hmm. You know, I'm going to have some... So first, since I have the initiative, I get to assign my wild dice. And now I need to be a little bit more strategic about this. I'm going to go ahead and go with a uh, triple six here. going to see if I can use that. Jack, what do you want to do with your wild dice? Do you want to save it or do you want to assign it? Um, I shall save it. Oh, very cool. So now I still have the initiative with the four singles, so I get to pick who activates a fighter first, but we're actually now going to go into the reserve phase that didn't happen in the first turn. So we're in the reserve phase. Again, on the deployment card it said RND2, so that means our reserves are going to show up turn two. And since I have the initiative, I get to set up my uh, fighters in reserve. Uh, and on the deployment card, it shows deployment lines. So in this case, my deployment line is this whole edge of the battlefield, where sometimes it might be only you know a, a quarter of the battlefield. That's what Jack's going to have. I have to set up first, wholly within three of this line. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Rock Tusk Prowler, set him up there, and the Beast Speaker right here. So they're both wholly within three of that battlefield edge, and now Jack can set up his dagger. And by dagger, I mean hammer. <laughs> Setting up my hammer here. I'm just going to put them right there. Only within three of my table edge. Perfect. So after that, now we can move into the combat phase, where since I have initiative, I get to pick who gets to take the first activation, and that's going to be me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Rock Tusk Prowler. He's going to do an attack action. So we're going to look here at his card. First for uh, his attack, which has this nice little <laughs> chompy bite mark symbol right there. It's got a one inch range, so we can confirm. Yeah, the Iron Legionary is uh, within one inch, so I can choose him as the target for my attack. I'm going to get four attacks here, so that's four dice. I have a strength of four, which I then compare to the Iron Legionary's toughness of four. It means I need four or better on my two hit dice to deal damage, and I'm dealing two damage uh, but on a six, I'm doing a critical hit for five damage. Now, they've got ten wounds here. Let's see if I can bring this guy down. Let's just get two sixes right here. Oh, thank you. 
Well, there's one, one so six. that's going to be uh, five damage and then two damage. So I'm going to be dealing seven damage to the Iron Legionary uh. with my first action. Uh, and for this one, oh, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to have to attack him again because I, I wanted to go see if I could kill this guy and then pounce and run over here, but for me to move away from... Uh, the Iron Legionary, I'd have to use a disengage action. So in this case, I'm just going to go and attack him one more time, see if I can bring him down. And I do, for another 7 damage, chew that guy apart as I pop out for my ambush. So as my first activation, I will be activating this Iron Legionary, and he has a movement of 4, so I will move here. We did kind of a, a demo, we moved around. Yeah. <laughs> He's within an yeah, inch. He's within an inch here, and so I will attack. With my second activation, I will attack. On the Beast Speaker. So, my Iron Legionary, uh, I have two attacks, a strength of three. Your toughness is a four, and so I need five to get you. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. Go ahead and activate this Planes Runner. And. She's going to go right here for one move, for one action. And then back up into this corner for another. So activating my last Iron Legionary. So got a movement of four. We'll bring it up here. And now I am going to throw my Bola, which takes a double. I'm going to use my double two. Pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter and roll two dice. For each roll of a four or five, allocate one damage point to that fighter. For each roll of a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter equal to the value of this ability, which is a two. So, five to sixes. Oh, you, oh. oh no. I was going to say, yeah, who are we throwing at that? Two. I was just throwing oh. at the kitty cat. And activate this planes runner. He is also going to move his five inches. And for a second move, he's going to go ahead and pop behind the wall right there. I'm going to use my last double, the two fives, to rush with my Breacher. He has a movement of four, so plus one, and uh, these are stairs here, so he can go over them. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to go his five there, then another five, two right there. He's getting dangerously close. This plane's runner, he's going to move five inches. Now this is the only terrain feature that is more than three inches on this board right now are these ladders. So he's gonna go ahead and make a jump where he is going to just go all the way down. But I have to roll a dice and on a one, he's going to take uh, fall damage. Or no, sorry, let me just roll this. Ooh, actually, I believe he's gonna take one fall damage. Yes, he takes one point of fall damage. That's what you get. Hurt his ankle. First blood. Got to move my drill master. Has a movement of five. This is the fastest thing I have in my army. Got to move there. Activate again. Move there. I'm trying to uh, consolidate after that devastating loss to the Iron Legionary. <laughs> Got like a mauled by a lion. <laughs> Bone saw. <laughs> Bone saw is ready. He's gonna kind of jump over here. It's two inches. He's gonna move right here. And in this case, he's just gonna wait since. There's nothing else for him to do. Alright, my Chaos Duradin. They exist. He's going to move his movement. He has a three inch. <laughs> you spend a bunch of money on Forge World. <laughs> good, good old Forge World. It's going to end up right there. You know, actually I think I need to... Uh, I didn't get to use my, my triple once again. I'm just going to have to go ahead and make that in a double and rush him. He needs to go ahead and move five. And First Fang needs to move another five to get right here. Dominar. He's going to move, too. He wants to join his friends. He's a leader. He can't lead from way back there. <laughs> so he's going to move it a four. And I'm activate it a second time. And move eight. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Beast Speaker. She's going to attack with her nice bone sword. Got three attacks with a strength of four. You got a toughness of four. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh. This is the guy. I was a different guy. Oh, right. Yeah, we had backup trying to cheat. Oh, with the toughness shield. Five. Oh, no, you're right. I am now wounding on fives here. I definitely have the shield. Oh, very Blanet. nice. Blanet. 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 
And I get one more action, so I'm gonna do it uh, attack again. No! No, that's You're a right, that critical miss. Is. So I'm gonna move my Signifer. He is gonna go his four inches. And I'm gonna activate again because he can't throw his bola. I just want to get right here. I feel like you're ganging up on animals. <laughs> Call PETA. You know, I think my my tactics of uh, defend defend the, the high ground with the shield, I don't think that's going to work. I'm, I think I'm about to be, what, divide and conquer? I'm about to be taken apart here. So I think I have to respond and now... Uh, I've already forgotten this guy's name, but I wrote it down, so we'll remember after he does something. Oh yeah, I totally forgot my guy's name too. <laughs> it's like something weird with a J in there. <laughs> uh, we'll get we'll get it by turn three. Um, so for is this gonna be two movement? Oh no, yeah. So he can just jump down, right? He can go like this. His four inches, and he's falling. Uh, Less than less than three yeah, inches, right look, there. Like it's just less than three. You want to put that back three. up there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get these things yes. are see through. And it's yeah. just less than three, and just it says three or more is when you get hurt. Yeah. So he actually nails that jump, sticks the landing. He's gonna move one more time to go right there. And Jack's gonna have to pass. So the heart eater, he's going to move five and whoop, jump right down there. And another movement of five. It's gonna go right here. And it, for round two, uh, we I did lose the Iron Legionary with the twin hammers, but I like my chances. I'm all you know yeah, converging on this the, guy. He's not part of the <laughs> Hopefully, I you get care about that guy. I get the initiative, and uh, we need to name new people. Um, I will name this gentleman who uh, lived. He <laughs> 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 might be Harry Potter or something like that. The Legionnaire who lived. So, I'm going to go with the first name, roll this d10. I got a 1. Sever. Sever. I like that one. Yeah, does he get a last name? He does get a last name. Yeah. Sever. 9. Kolsk. Sever Kolsk. Oh, and oh, let's give him a background, too. You know, Sever Kolsk. Ooh, uh, <laughs> unstoppable force. The warrior eschews tactical cunning, of course, preferring to face everything, every threat head on. Exactly. That's exactly Safely what Safely behind a shield. Sever Kolsk. And... It was Bruged. Bruged. Bruged a sledge fist. <laughs> Brent, who are you naming? I'm going to name the guy that broke his ankle when he tried to uh, jump. <laughs> so that's going to be Ugala. <laughs> Ugala. Uh, what's his last name? Ugala Heart Eater. That's interesting because he's not the Heart Eater. But <laughs> clearly, this guy's just a moron. He thinks he's the Heart Eater. He broke his ankle. What's his background, though? Gruesome trophy. This warrior always carries a trophy of flesh cut from uh, a memorable foe. You know, I think it's memorable to him, but I think we're going to have to think of... Jack, what do you think that his his memorable foe is? I, I kind of think it was just like... A pig <laughs> Knowing or Grusk? Yeah, it was something like a turtle. Something, uh... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He, he carries a turtle shell on his belt from the... Uh, yeah, he's, Which one he's, is this one right here? Oh, it's this guy. Oh, this idiot. Yeah, yeah, he's, right he's a hated enemy. <laughs> yeah, more about that backstory later. Rolling off for initiative. Here we go. Ooh, I got triple sixes. I got triple and, ones. And I got three singles. Ooh, I only have one single, so you have initiative. And you've already saved one of your wild dice, correct? Yes, I did. Yeah, so you're going to get a set. You have, a, uh, you have two wild dice now. Why are you going to use any of them? What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to not use any right now. Not use any? All right. All right. Well, uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and I will turn this one into a quad. Ooh, beautiful. Uh, so I have m the most singles, so I get to go first. You get to choose who oh, goes first. And that will be me. I'll, okay. I'll, take the first, I'll take the first turn in the third round. Okay. 
So I'm going to use my triple sixes to use the uh, ability Stand Defiant. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the toughness characteristics of friendly fighters while they're within six inches of this fighter. Uh, nobody's over the uh-oh. Uh, and so it's, <laughs> if you look, it's a shield icon, and the uh, signify, signifer has a shield icon. So he's going to be banging his banner. Right, so those are called rune marks. So then you can consult the card and then look at the ability card and see what they can use. And that's probably going to benefit Standing defiant. everybody. Stand defiant or, or I mean, he certainly does, isn't standing alone. But <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and so I'm going to pass with his other activation. I want him to stay in that kind of location there. Okay, cool. Well, if you wait, you also, if you wanted to later, uh, since an ability doesn't cost uh, an action, you could have him do an action later on. Okay, so yes. maybe if somebody attacks him, he can attack back. Yes, he will wait. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Rock Tusk Prowler. So this guy's what? This Iron Legionary is toughness six? Yeah. After that buff? Wow. Uh, my strength of four here with my attacks. I'm going to need fives, but let's go get ahead and get some sixes. Critical hit. Tear this guy apart. Oh, thank you. Ooh, Ooh. Okay, but it's still only seven damage. There's five plus two. You're still alive, so I'm going to go ahead and use an ability. Let me take a look. Okay, I'm going to attack one more time. Bring this guy down. Maybe. Two. No, he still has one health left. Yes. Uh, so I'm actually going to have to use my quad ones, and I'm going to use Rampage, where I get to make a move action and an attack action. Well, unfortunately, I can't move here, so I'm just going to go for a third attack. Can I finally bring down this iron? No! Yeah! Stand alone! <laughs> so I'm attacking the Beast Speaker with my Iron Legionnaire, and I have a strength of three, you have a toughness four, so I'm hitting on fives. Ah, uh, oh. uh, nothing there. I'm going to use my next activation to attack him again. Me fives. Ah, oh, nothing. Oh, leave her alone. Fives. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to attack with the Beast Speaker because uh, people are coming for her and she needs to get out of here if she can. Come on, I only need to do a single damage here. But I'm, uh, it's going to be on fives to hit. Yeah, I got uh, it. So that's going to be just one damage, but that's enough to bring him Just enough down. to kill him. I'm going to do my best to run away. Uh, sorry, Rock Tusk. I'm going to go right here. And that's going to conclude her activation. Oh, I'm going to move up to here and attack with my second action. You hit an animal with a hammer. So strength three, toughness four, need fives. Mm -hmm. One. You got one. How and much damage? Is, uh, one damage. Just one. I'm going to activate the first fang. He's going to go ahead and move his four inches. Now we do have this uh, twist up dusk. Since this is battle round three, you can only uh, your attack range has been limited to six inches. So his harpoon goes from eight to six, but he can just barely measure to the armature. So for his second action, he's going to go ahead and try and throw his spear. It's a strength of four. And your toughness is... Am I within six of my uh, signifier? Oh, no, you are. <laughs> Aha, my toughness then is a five. Five, okay, so I'm going to need fives to get you here. Ooh, and oh, it's a crit. crit. It's a spear. So that means it's going to be five damage. Wow. And I'm going to have to see if you fall. All right, on a one, I will fall down. Oh, oh I <laughs> fell. <laughs> so you get to pick where I fall. <laughs> Um, and so we know this this still is less than three inches. It's not going to take damage, but I get to put him somewhere within two inches. That's the center of his base. So I'm just going to go, Whoa! and uh, he's going to fall right there. And of course, um, you know, everybody at home, make sure to ask before you move your opponent's models or have them move them. Uh, Jack knows me, but either either way, <laughs> this guy just falls down right there. Uh, uh, it's much of the activate, and I'm going to get him out of dodge there. He can only go three inches, and he's hurt. Falls down here, so and this whole gang of dudes. And then he's going to go for the second activation. He's running to safety. Yes. I'm going to activate this planes runner. They're going to go ahead, move an inch, and now they can move through the archway. They don't have to open the door here, so they can actually move four. And then I've got another move action. That's gonna put me right here next to, right behind the wall. So we're gonna go with my breacher, four inches. Bruge. And then another four inches. Oh no. 
Let's go with Oogla Heart Eater. Even though he broke his ankle, still got a movement of five. And he's gonna go back up his buddy here. Oops. And he's done. Going with the Drill Master. That's a movement of five. Go here. You like that movement of five? It's oh, nice, yeah, right? It's very, it's very. <laughs> it's it's very liberating. Oh man, I'm just <laughs> surrounded. The Prey Taker, which I forgot his name again. He's gonna move, and he's gonna move again. None of them can attack, so I'm hoping in a later round, to club you in the face. Going with my Dominar, he has a movement of four. And I'm gonna activate again. The whole game is converging around Sigma. <laughs> there we go. Bone saw is ready. Gonna well, he'll take he'll take the possibly take fall damage. So, but I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do nice big whoa jump right there. See if I take any fall damage. I'm gonna take one, and then I'm going to move another four right there. Gonna activate my uh, signifer who was waiting, and a movement of four. Just gonna go clang, clang, clang over the dolly. <laughs> Go with this planes runner. And go ahead and move five. And then go ahead and move another five. Try and disrupt your Dominar. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the Heart Eater too. I'm gonna move up and join the fight right here. And that will be it for round three. Which normally would end the game, right? This game is normally three rounds? Um, I think in this one, Maybe, yeah, it's usually, but since nobody's won, we're actually doing at the end of the, also the fourth battle round. Hmm. If you're within four inches of the battlefield edge, you immediately count as being taken down. So, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> that, uh, that's not looking good for a few of us. Let's see what happens at battle round four. <laughs> All right, time for the hero phase, the initiative roll off. Ooh, I've got a quad one. I have all singles. No, no, I have a double. You have a double. Uh, so you have the initiative, so you're going to get wild dice. Do you want to assign any of your three wild dice? Now, so remember, weird. you can't assign multiple wild dice to one value. Okay, I'll do. I'll make this a four. Sure. Make this a six. Oh, this is it's going to be a big turn. <laughs> and I'll make, and you have two as well, right? Uh, yeah, I have two, so... I have three. Mm-hmm. So I will uh, end it there. Sure, sure. I'm going to go ahead and assign my wild die to another single. So now we have an even number of singles. We're going to dice off to see who takes initiative here. Oh, we have a gamble. Okay. We're gambling here. Uh. Oh, no! That was a one. Ah, we got three. initiative. I, I shall take... The turn. Jack, that was a pretty exciting turn, but who do you think has earned a reputation here? Who's earned a name? Um, I... The th coolest thing that happened was the dwarf getting hit and falling. <laughs> so I'm going to name uh, the Chaos Jordan. So, D10, we're going to go 8. Mm, Varka. Va Varka, <laughs> I like it. And the last name... Oh, it's D10 as well. Oops. Varka Varsk. Varka Varsk. That's uh, like Swedish chef going on. Yeah, <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's not a favored warrior. He's not a favored warrior. No, his that's because his story is he uh, got hit with a spear and <laughs> fell off of a <laughs> off of a building. And I, of course, I'm gonna have to name the first Fang because that was just that was a very impressive shot. His name is going to be Gantul, and his last name uh, it's a six blood tooth Gantul blood tooth. And I, I could pick one of these, but I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, he's he's the best shot in his warband. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my triple to stand defiant. So I'm going to clang my bell, my uh, my banner, and I will then move my four inches. So everybody within six inches of him is plus one to your toughness. Cool. 
Now, does he want to wait? Or does he want to just? Uh, oh, does he want to move I again? Two actions. Oh well, the uh, the ability is in addition to your actions. Oh, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah so oh, I would have won the game if I knew that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, actually, he's just going to wait. Yes. Yeah, yeah, wait. Wait. In case anybody comes up, then you can bonk him in the head. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and activate my heart eater. I'm gonna use my quad and use the ability for the untamed beast. Unleash the beast. Which is until the end of the battle round, add half the value of this ability, so the value being whatever the dice is, in this case one, rounding up to the attacks and strength characteristic of attack actions made by the spider that have a range characteristic of three or less. So I'm going to get an extra strength and an extra attack. So now he's going to make his attacks against the drill master. He has uh, four attacks plus one, so he's getting five. And he's strength five, and you're toughness five now? Are you yep. within range? Yeah, the signal first. So I'm going to go ahead and need fours. Uh, I got one, one for crit. two and a crit for five, so I'm doing seven damage. Okay. So you've got eight left. I'm going to go for another attack. I still get the bonus here. Needing fours to hit. Uh, let's see, that's eight. So seven plus eight, 15. I just... Kill you with an Oh my <laughs> goodness. Unleash the beast! So I'm going to attack with my Dominar. Um, he has uh, three attacks, strength five, toughness three, so I'm hitting on threes. Oh, my poor planes runner. Uh, so Whoa, what do you got? Crit is five. Five. <laughs> and then two at, these are two each, so five, six, seven, eight, nine. I only have eight health, I'm already dead. <laughs> Excellent. So no, so you, you get to... Have do another action. Else. I'm going to yeah, use yeah. this. It's called uh, double. Uh, it's called. Uh, it's a double to use. Lead with strength. Mm -hmm. A fighter can use this ability only if the enemy fighter has been uh, enemy fighter has been taken down by an action Ooh. made by them at this activation. The fighter makes a bonus move action or bonus attack action. So I'm going to make a bonus move. Uh huh. Which is here. Oh, going for my leader. And then and I then will attack the leader get to with attack. my second attack. Which is the three attacks, strength five. What's your toughness? My toughness is four. So I'm doing on threes again. Oh, just one is two damage. I'll take it. Okay, I kind of need to, to hold the, the breacher here. Uh, you know, I think I'm just gonna go with two attacks with... Oh, actually, wait, I don't know if I can see you with a whip now that we're in, uh, yeah, three inches away in any subsequent battle rounds. As long as you're within three. Okay, you're within three. I can see you in the dark. I'm going to do uh, first an attack with my whip. I've got four attacks. I've got a strength of four. Right now you have a toughness of six. Yeah, I need uh, <laughs> I need fives here, but maybe I can get some criticals. Ooh, there's That's a critical good. for two damage. <laughs> Excellent. And then I'm just going to do it again. All right, just two damage. Two damage. I have <laughs> just made him mad. Sacrifice yourself. All right, he will move his three inches to here, and then wait. Hmm, he's lying in wait, thinking about his choices after he fell off of a he's building. He's to be four inches away from the edge. Oh, good call. I'm gonna activate the Prey Taker here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move four. Then he's gonna take a swing at the Dominar. Uh, toughness of five, because of my Signifier. And a strength of four. Let's see some crits for four damage. Uh, just one for two. Ouch. So the Breacher, he has a movement of four. See, Jack remembered at the end of the battle round, if you're within four inches of the board, you're removed. So... And he will wait. <laughs> and he will wait. So goodbye, Beast Speaker. I'm going to disengage the Rock Tusk Prowler. So he's going to go ahead and move three, which puts him an inch away. So he's completed the disengage. Then for his second action, he's going to move. He's just going to run right into here. It's just got to be four away. Yeah, he's going to get attacked by this waiting guy, but Jack's playing well, so we're going to we're going to reward that. Janeri is going to run away. I need to get out of the danger zone. <laughs> this whole board is the danger. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not over here. No. He took one damage over here. The whole board's the danger zone. Moving this planes runner. Here's an inch. Here, oops, here's another four. He's moving the entire board. Let's just make a, a real, real nice mosh pit here. 
and go touch the armator. Bruge Sledge Fist is going to attack the cat. Since he was lying in wait cleverly. <laughs> I've got a toughness of four. Oh, I got lying in wait. Uh, yeah. I thought you did that on purpose. Oh, no, I'm not uh, that so, funny. So, uh, I have a strength of six, so I need threes. I rolled like a jerk. That's what I get rewarded for. for oh, no. Throwing dice like that. <laughs> uh, so I double miss. Move this other planes runner. Oops. I'm just knocking everything over. This is worth it. Okay. I think so we might want to try sticky tacking the train down. Yeah, I, I think that is an excellent idea, Jack. I'm going to move him up five as well. And that's his activation. I'm going to attack with the signifier right over here, going against the cat. Um, so my strength is four, your toughness is four. I have three attacks. I need fours. Come on. No! Oh. <laughs> Go ahead and double move the prey taker here. He will move right there. I don't like your dominar. So my armador is gonna attack Rugula Heart Eater. Oogla Heart <laughs> Oogla, Eater. Oogla. Yeah. <laughs> he has a strength, he has four attacks, strength four. What's your toughness? Only three. All right, so I just need threes, come on. Ooh, oh, a, and oh, a crit. crit. So. My critical is a four, and my other one's a one, so I do five damage. Five yeah. damage. Uh, and he already had one damage from breaking his ankle from jumping off the platform, so he's got only two health left. He's almost down. All right, bone saw. He's Here he comes. He's moving four. <laughs> and he's going to move four again. That, uh, that one damage on his ankle, not slowing him down. And that is going to conclude the turn, so I guess, what, Furies come and some mm -hmm. is Chaos Beast as she's yeah. backed into the corner, whipping the Ogre Breacher. She has uh, has her back turned to something else, and wow! <laughs> it pulls her off the board. Just as I planned. <laughs> Just kidding, we reread the card, and it's actually Shield Fighters. So she was part of the dagger, so never mind, she's actually okay. Uh, that's just kind of our learning process. Uh, I still said we could take away, but Jack is, is nice. We're learning the game, so she's going to stick around, and we're going to move into Battle Round 5. Wow. Play off for Battle Round 5. Who said this game takes a short yeah, amount of yeah, time? <laughs> playing all night. Let's see, I have... I have a trip. A double? Oh, I have four singles. That's interesting. I have uh, three singles and a triple. Okay, well, right now I have initiative, so I'm grabbing... The wild dice. And you already have a wild dice, right? I have, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, so now so. I have two. Right. So I'm going to assign this to... Uh, I need a cool ability here. So let's let's make that a four. I have a triple now. What are you going to do with let's your uh, two wild dice? So I will... Okay, I have three. So I will use one as a single. Mm -hmm. And I can't use another one as a single, right? Correct. I will turn my tr double... Uh, excuse me. I will turn my triple into a quad. Nice. So now we have to dice off to see who goes first. So I just want to, this is what I'm going to do. So now that's four. And then we'll turn that into a six. Actually, I don't, I don't want to turn, I'll turn it into a five because I want to use the six here to oh, beat you. right, right, right. No, I got oh, the six. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, I get to pick. I'm going to activate the Rock Tusk Prowler. I'm going first. And he's going to attack the Signifer. So... He's a toughness four right now since he hasn't put up his ability. I'm strength four. I'm needing fours here. Ooh, two crits. Oh my goodness. So that's that's ten, ten damage and then two more. Twelve. So twelve. I have three left. And I'm gonna attack him one more time. Come on, Mufasa. Another crit. Uh, he's dead. I am the king Toast. of the jungle. I'm activating my Dominar and I'm gonna attack your heart. Heart eater. eater. Heart eater. So I have yeah, three the real picks. heart eater. Um, hitting you on. Threes, because I have strike five. Ooh, oh, there's a crit. a crit. That's five damage. And, Ouch. And a two, so that's seven. Seven, very nice. Uh, I'm going to use my quad and attack uh -oh. with uh, Rampage. Now, um, this fighter makes a bonus move action. Mm -hmm. Then they can make a bonus attack action. Mm -hmm. So you just get an extra attack. Okay. Yeah, because a disengage is different than a, a move action. Okay. So my second attack. All right. Crit, oh, so two crits! 10 and 15? So, no, no, there's two crits, so right. it's 10 plus two, two, so 12. 12, right, and then how much damage have you already done? You already uh, A crit and a normal. So you're, uh, 19 damage. Uh, I have one health left. Can you split up your attacks? 
Uh, I don't believe so. You pick who is the target of the attacks, but did you... I mean, you could use then the uh, the one rampage one. and go one more time. Yeah, yeah, use the rampage and attack him when it finish off. Oh! Hopefully. Okay. Oh! Gotcha, barely. 21. The leader is a leader, and he's part of my shield, so oh. I'm, uh... We, we each lost a shield member yes, here. This did. is heating up. <laughs> Roman Reigns is down. <laughs> We just realized he was already hurt from the last time he yeah, attacked him. Dead. So he's dead. So we're going to put those two damage on uh, Dean Ambrose. <laughs> uh, well, he put two damage onto my Dean Ambrose. So now I have to put two damage on his Dean Ambrose. Uh, the Armiter. I'm going to attack him with the Plains Runner, who's just about dead. And he's going to use Onslaught for a double. I have a triple, so uh, it's going to give me plus one attack to my characteristics for the rest of the turn so I can get two rounds of attacks in here. I have a strength of three of a toughness of four. four. I'm going to be needing fives here. Nothing. No, no, no. And uh, we're going to go one more time, do the same thing. So there's uh, four damage. For four you. damage? Oh, yeah. I have. Ooh, I have twelve. I've taken five mm -hmm. and I'm up to nine, so I have three left. Oh, still alive. So I'm going to go with my Iron Legionnaire into this guy here. And what's his name again? Ah, uh, well, he thinks he's a heart eater, especially now that my heart eater's dead. <laughs> oh, uh, Oogala. Oogala. Oogala oh. heart eater. So I have strength three, toughness three. I need fours. Oh, I got one, so one, one damage. damage. I've got one health left. I want to attack you again. No, 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 you can't, you can't. Can't bring him down ah, with a crit, too. Uh, Oogala nice. gets clocked in the face here. Take your oogly Good. Out of here. Oh, very nice. Good oogly boogly. I've got another Plains Runner, and he's going to try and do what Oogala Heart Eater never could. He's going to attack the Armiter with his three attacks. I'm going to get one crit here, do three damage, and just wipe you out right now. Don't do it. No! Yeah, absolutely nothing! nothing. <laughs> he sucks. Going with Bruge Sledgefish, my uh, Ogor. Uh, Breacher versus Mufasa. Got it. Strength six. I'm wounded on threes. Come on, anything on crits. Oh, <laughs> this is the third time I've done that in this game. Oh gosh. Remember his uh, his origin. He's he's burnt and covered in scars. His eyes are burnt apparently. Yeah. And uh, he opened a door. Uh, yeah, we're gonna attack you again. Okay, Get, do it again. Do it. All right, okay. those are go both going through. How much damage eight is that? Damage. Eight damage. Okay, uh, that's on to the one I already have, so I'm up to nine. I'm uh, definitely renaming him to Bruge Pillow Fist because this is ridiculous. <laughs> that is, that happens too much. <laughs> Here comes the Beast Speaker. She's moving her five. Am I within an inch to? No, I'm not. So I'm going to have to go ahead and attack with the whip since uh, it worked so well last time. Put that two damage on. Bruge Pillow Fist here. Uh, I have a strength of four, and you have a toughness, toughness of five. Higher than that for sure. Hey, both oh. going through, but on the whip it's only one damage. So again, two more damage. Going with my armor. Oh, we did. We we named him. It's like Varsk Vashk. Or, <laughs> uh, or some sweet. Uh, Varka Varsk. Var Varka Varsk. Varka Varsk. Uh, and uh, four attacks, strength four. That's what I'm hitting you on threes. I got toughness Ooh, three. I a crit, oh, so no. that's four. Five, six damage. Uh, only got two health left, and you got another attack action another here. Another bite at the apple. And you just you just line these guys up. They're just going to keep Ooh, running oh, into you, and boof! That was a slayer. That was, there. you know, one hammer for uh, Oogala, and, uh, you know, <laughs> another for his, his, his uh, brother. We're going with the guy with the fanged axe, who has a name I can't remember, but he really hasn't... He hasn't done that much that's that exciting. He's got a strength of four. Toughness, toughness four. of four. I'm going to go ahead and need fours here. I've okay. got two. They're two damage each, so there's four, four damage. Four damage. You've already taken two, so you're up to six. six. Let's go for another attack action. Oh, and, uh... Reel that yeah. one. And you yeah. have absolutely nothing that time, so... <laughs> Coming up Millhouse. <laughs> Let's do the first Fang next, Gantul Bloodtooth. We saw how awesome he is with his spear. Uh, let's see what he can do with his axe. He's got Turn four around. attacks here. Oh yeah, it's, it's a dual line. He's got four attacks, or sorry, three attacks. 
And he's got a strength of four, so I'm gonna need fours. Oh, there's, that's what I'm gonna go over. Well, there's two, there's only one damage, so uh, you're up to eight. Well, let's get some of these crits for four, though. Nope, and just one more, so only doing three more damage. It's up to Bonesaw. So this is uh, my Seth Rollins versus... My Dean Ambrose. Your Dean Ambrose. <laughs> my Seth Rollins is already gone. <laughs> and I've got uh, an inch there, so I can go ahead and make an attack with the Sawtooth Axe. Let's go ahead and see what it does. It has four attacks, but strength three. So more attacks, but uh, still four damage on a crit. I'm going to go ahead and need fives. Yay! <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Turn six? Gosh. <laughs> I'm definitely going to name the Dominar. He uh, put in work. He killed the Heart Eater. Yeah, he's the true general. Oh, and uh, Hopefully let me find the space. There we go. Guy. What do we got? Six. Dran. Dran. We're going to give him a last name. Six. Dran Dredge. Dran Dredge. <laughs> and nice we're going to give him a cool oh, background. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah. Dran Dredge. He's the drill master. Drill master. He's responsible for maintaining cohesion and discipline in the ranks of the golems. I love it. Dran Dredge. Alliteration. I'm going to go ahead and name the Rock Tusk Prowler. Just a first name here. Uh, it's going to be a 10 Thuka. But also, let's see what Thuka's background is, since I, I don't know what to, to give him. Uh, a 1 Wild Tongue. Now, the warrior has a primal connection with chaotic beasts and is able to commune with them. So, he definitely is the Lion King. All of the other <laughs> chaotic monsters obey his his rule. Thuka. Hello. Okay. We're doing <laughs> turn six. We're doing turn six. He decided to come join us. <laughs> and, uh, it's time for the initiative roll. So, I have a double and four singles. I have a double and four shingles, too. Mmm. Mm. Well, we have to dice off for priority. So I got a three. You got a two. two. So now I have priority. I am going to give myself this uh, triple five. I'm with winning that. Wild, uh, with my wild dice. What would you like to do with yours? I want to give myself another single. Oh, so now you have priority, and you get to choose. I'm also going to point out, I think I figured out why this game's <laughs> taking a very long time. We forgot all about Grudge Match. Add one to the strength characteristic of attack actions made by fighters this battle that have a range characteristic of three left. So this is coming into effect now. Everyone's going to die. Let's do this. Yeah, it was on his side of the table, so I blame him. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go first, and I'm going to... Gosh, what was his name? Shoot, this is Walker. Dr oh. Dr 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 Dran, Dran, Dran Dredge. Dran Dredge. Dran Dredge. The drill master. Dran Dredge. It's Triple D. Yeah. Dr triple D is going to use Onslaught. <laughs> And so I'm going to get plus one to my attack. And so he already has three, so I'm going to get four dice. Oh and I have a strength of six now because we figured out we were playing wrong. So you're definitely wounded on threes. I mean, he was before. I rolled, uh, I rolled so bad this game, I, this wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, he rolled enough ones and twos. Whoa. Oh, so I have some twos, like normal. Right, right. But So this is a five and a two, so seven damage. Seven damage. Uh, right now, I believe I'm still alive. Yeah, I've only got 10 health, so I have one health left. Oh my gosh. Gonna... I want to split up my attacks. That's what I want to do. Well, I mean, you got a, what, you got a, an extra attack or extra attack action. Splitting well, gonna... your attacks always works. Yeah. Well, you can't split can't. up your attacks. So I'm going to finish off. Finish him off. Yeah, he's part of, he's part of the shield, and he's super he's dead. Ah, he has a name I forget, but uh, he just wasn't that remarkable. <laughs> so it's one to two. <laughs> Rocky the Rock Tusk Prowler. You mean Thuka the Lion King? He's gonna attack the uh, Ogre Breacher. Well, <laughs> Bruch. Uh, I've got four attacks here. Now, so we've got plus one strength. I am now strength five. I'm toughness five. Toughness five. So, so now I need foes. fours. Let's do this. I hope you roll bad. <laughs> I, I rolled pretty bad, but I got two damage. All right, now do it again. Let's do it again. Let's get those fives. Oh, Ooh. 10 damage. Ooh, so you did a total of 12? You did a total of 12. And I already had four, four on me. So you're up to 16. So that's a little over half my health. <laughs> oh, gosh. 14 left. <laughs> Ow. Varka Varsk is attacking <sighs> yeah, Bonesaw. Okay. You have a strength of five. Your toughness is four. So I need threes. I need some sixes. All right, there's a six. Oof. So that is five damage right there. Five damage total. Uh, I've got five health left. I'm going to attack again. Come on, let me get some sixes. 
Oh, oh! One health left! One health! One health left! God, oh, and he's the last member of my, my shield! Dead. No, you would have won the game, but yes. it's not over yet. It's oh, not over yet. Can I use, is it rerolls? Can I get command points? <laughs> well, you saw me roll in this game. <laughs> like, did shield touch these? <laughs> I mean, we left the game at his house. He might have switched yeah. the dice. The beast speaker is actually going to move so I can get in range of the better attack. Okay. And now I'm going to attack Bruges Pillow Fist. Slice yep. Fist. <laughs> He's got to earn it. Uh, I've got three attacks with my sword and. Preface five. And I'm strength five now after we remember the Grudge Master. So I need fours. Well, I got one. It's just a single damage. But she does have an ability that I'm going to use for a. The double Beast Master, pick a friendly fighter with the Beast Rune Mark within four inches of this fighter. That fighter makes a bonus attack action. So, Lion King, Suka, is going to go again. How many points did that cost? I bet it took four. <laughs> uh, I got to be with it. Oh. So, there's six, uh, and then a five. Eleven damage from uh, Thuka. So, so, the Rock Parlor. So, you're up to tw- uh, 27 Ooh, I have damage. Three have have three left. <laughs> To take be the hero, Legionnaire. You can do it, buddy. Be the hero. Get these health tokens away. <laughs> and now, so he. I don't know if he has a name. I don't think he does. I mean, he's about to earn one if he's he kills me. Yes. So he only has two attacks. I'm going to use red dice because they're special. Two attacks. Strength of four now. Uh, and toughness four. He's one four. Oh, oh that's it! You <laughs> mash him! And Jack wins the game! <laughs> Jack, you won the... Whoop, that was the worst high five of Warcry ever. Let's get a better one. Oh, no, we got it there. Uh, that's game. We did it. <sighs> we played a game of Warcry. Warcry yes. Uh, we're, so we're going to be doing just sort of, I, I think, a, a few kind of a light campaign. We definitely want to try rolling on some of the charts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the post-game stuff in the book. Yeah. All right, it's time for the aftermath sequence, and we're going to do this a little differently just because we're doing sort of a mini campaign, but first we have to calculate how many glory points we each scored. So looking at this chart, we determined that Jack scored nine glory points, did things like won the battle, took down at least two-thirds of my warband. Uh, I only scored two. So with that, though, you can usually in a campaign buy territories and increase the number of uh, fighters in your warband. We don't have extra models, so we're not going to be using those rules for our short kind of campaign here, but we certainly will be using glory to purchase additional search rules. So Jack, you got non-glory points. You want to go ahead and get an additional search? Yeah, and you can only do that once uh, in this manner, in this step. So we'll go ahead and make those rules in just a moment, but now we need to move on to injury rolls. We're going to be rolling injury rolls uh, only for models that have earned names so far, just because nobody has uh, additional destiny levels or artifacts that, you know, if, uh, if, if they die, it doesn't matter. Then they just get replaced. So first, we need to talk about the pretty unremarkable Makot Vorn Slayer, who I just kind of, like, forgot his name the whole game. Let's see what happens on a 2d6. On a 6, he makes a full recovery, so maybe... He will earn his name later on. However, we do have Oogala Heart Eater, the guy <laughs> that <Oogla>. who <laughs> broke his ankle, uh, ran into the armator, and died. Let's see. Uh, he, he, he lives, actually. So he lives to fight another day. But who we have here? Sever Kolsk, another guy we probably forgot his name because... Yeah, he died first yeah. time. What, what, did, what did he do to even earn a name? I forget. He, he must uh, have I done... I think he lived... A little bit. He stood. There. Oh right, right. Yeah, he, he stood alone. Stood his ground. Well, let's see. Did that pay off for him? Five. Ooh. Well, he would have lost a destiny level if he had one, but actually, he's going to be okay later on. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll just have to remember that uh, his destiny is less remarkable mm-hmm. than somebody else's. And now I get to search for treasure. Yes. Jack, you're rolling for artifacts and uh, for or for lesser artifacts, and. It's a, a D66. We're going to go ahead and make the red the 10 value. So you're going to be doing this twice. Let's see what you get. 24. 24. That is going to be a 
Swift Wind Dust. A uh, bear can use this lesser artifact as an action. If they do so, add one to the move characteristic of the bear until the end of the battle. So you'll have to figure out who you want to give that to, but uh, maybe just make another roll, too. Oh, that guy? Oh. <laughs> Perfect. And what else do we get? 21. 21, which is a healing potion. That is consumable. The bear can use this lesser artifact as an action. If they do so, remove d6 damage points allocated to them. Yeah, that goes to the boss man. He needs he needs his uh, his juice. I get to make one lesser artifact roll. 13. It's a 13, which is nothing, nothing but, but dust. dust. <laughs> oh. Wait, I get nothing but dust and you get different dust? How does that make sense? <laughs> that makes sense, though, that I lost. My Google came back empty-handed. Not but dust. We also got a roll for destiny levels, so that is restricted to just models that survived the battle. So let's go ahead and start with Thuka on a six, again a destiny level. No, he does not have a destiny. What about the beast speaker? Nothing, and uh, Gantul Bloodtooth, no no destiny for me. I got I got dust for artifacts. Okay. The Dominar. Triple D, see what he's gonna get. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, he gets a destiny level. level. Uh, what about, what about Bruges? Bruges. Pillow fist. No destiny. That's no, nothing. Of course not. He's walking around with his vial of dust. <laughs> Vorsky, Vorsk. <laughs> Vorsky, nope. Vorsky, Vorsky. And no. an unnamed warrior. His destiny is he's going to fall off a <laughs> larger building. Well, that's appropriate. The, this guy was totally awesome. He gets a destiny level. And I think kind of at the end here, too, I'm going to go ahead and roll a name for my beast speaker. Who do you want to roll a name for? Maybe, yeah, for that unnamed. guy. Unnamed. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, gonna get a name. Dude with the shield, what do you get? Nine. We're Crowla. 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 That was my first car. Drammer. <laughs> Call a Drammer. Uh, any, any. Yeah, he definitely is a very good warrior. Oh, well, you get that. Uh, yeah. I knew that. Foe. Cruel tyrant. The warrior commands through sheer brutality. Didn't Damn. he just. I mean. He won the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's That's a cruel game. brutality. And the beast speaker, she bravely whipped the ogre breacher in the face. She definitely inspired the battle uh, after we got that rule correct. So her name is also Gantool, <laughs> but her last name is Spine Render, and she is sharp-eyed. So it's funny that even though Gantool has has the best accuracy with that spear throw, Gantool Spine Render is also sharp-eyed, so maybe there's a rivalry between those two about who has the sharpest eyes. So it's a very special realm talk about uh, Warcry. We kind of want to keep this just to our thoughts about this game and kind of uh, initial impressions. I think we might do more of a rules deep dive and kind of talk more about the game later, but Jack, what did you think? First impression, like, I, when I learned, I have to, like, I learned by doing, and so, you know, I watched a bunch of the videos, and Brent told me, like, this is how it works, and it was just in and out. But actually playing the game, I'm like, oh, this is, I enjoyed it. It is, uh, it's, it's, you know, hearing that, oh, it's a fast game. I think us forgetting that one rule would have sped this game up, definitely. But, Probably. yeah, I uh, enjoyed it. Small, uh, there's strategy, there's, it's a cool game. It's, it's, I think they hit the nail on the head. It's a quick game, and I think any more, like, because I've seen people complain, it's not why I wanted this, I wanted more time. It would definitely slow the game down which I think they're going for a quick, you know, half hour to 45 minute game because I think, like, don't want to get too into it, but Age of Sigmar, I think it takes way longer than they estimate it to because mm -hmm. I've seen so many people at tournaments and stuff not be able to finish. And, like, they say you should be able to finish the game, and I've seen people on, I've seen people on turn two <laughs> in two and a half hours. Yeah, saying they're not the fastest players, but this is perfect. I think, you know, it, it hit the nail on the head again, like I said, and I enjoy it. And I believe that this is just the beginning. There will be expansions for this for piece of people who want other things. I'm curious to see what other what other warbands do. That's what I want to know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what I was your thing. I was I, I really enjoyed it. The what I was hoping to you're have just, you're just a GW shit. Just, just a GW fanboy. No. Uh, I was hoping to get you know, those roles. It it relies on a little bit of luck for funny things to happen, but uh, I just I love laughing about the I did roll a one when you threw his spear. Right. <laughs> so like I had that dude at the uh, 
throw a, a spear at your. I mean, first of all, so we gave them. We, they earn names too. So Gantul Bloodtooth threw a spear long distance, almost in the dead of night, at uh, Varko Varsk, the Armador. I uh, did a crit, wounded him, and then you rolled a one, and he fell off the the edge. Maybe there's a review point too. I do almost just want to say that like all of these buildings are the three inches that you like should take the fall damage, but it, uh, right now you know it's it's kind of too short. But that type of stuff, funny things that happened or memorable moments too, like the guy with the shield who uh, soaked up all that damage. Just really stuff that you can just add a little bit of narrative to, a little bit of reputation, and kind of see where that goes too. Because now going into the next game, we have a few of our fighters have names. Some of them, you know, like your your leader's awesome now, right? He's got a healing potion, he's got a destiny level, and the the first game, he totally hammer smash face, right? And, and, and like, <laughs> look at my, my pillow fist. Oh yeah! Oh, gosh, yeah. how many ones and twos did I roll? <laughs> All I needed was a three. Yeah. You know this guy? He's doing eight damage, and I'm ready to kill things. That uh, what's your lion's name? Oh, uh, uh, Thuka. Thuka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thuka. He was on the awesome. Floor. Also, we get, we can't forget then that uh, Bruges, the the ogre breacher, somehow unlocked a door, <laughs> opened a door with his like you know, meat hammer on his hands, right? Yeah, gent gently. So I think it's stuff like that. Um, I think kind of my one recommendation of you know go like for us going into the next game is to uh, I'm, I'm just going to reread the movement rules. They kind of introduce the movement rules as like oh it's really simple this is all you do, but there is a li- little bit more to climbing and stairs. I just want to go ahead and, and double check that. So if you already have checked out the rules for Warcry. And we did make some mistakes uh, with, with the movement, or really anything else. I think we did pretty good, other than forgetting plus one strength to everybody. Uh, but besides that, I think we did a good job. Um, and I think yeah, we'll give you more feedback on this game as we continue to play games. And uh, looking forward to more war bands. And looking forward to... I want your leader to suffer a horrible defeat in the next game. Yeah, nobody died, right? Uh, and I want Bruges Pillow Fist to redeem himself. Yes, uh, that's what I really yeah, want. Yeah. I'm looking at the back of this. It says uh, play time approximately one to three hours. So I think we hit that. Many <laughs> people who thought it was going to be a half hour game. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it took a little. It took took uh, a lot longer maybe than we thought. But uh, I think if you're not filming battle reports and you're not, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, turning off the camera on and off for every clip. I think this game actually does probably go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching.